Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Social Distance Learning brought to you by the Liberal Gun Club. Tonight, there is no bench doctor. We have a special guest uh, from the Surfrider Foundation. Anna will be talking to us about uh, shotgun wads and the effects they have on oceans and related bodies of water. Now, uh, this presentation is being streamed out of Zoom to Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, typically, uh, we, are, we have live firearms during these presentations, so we don't stream out to YouTube. Um, that's also going to take effect here, even though there are no firearms, live firearms, but this will be up on YouTube on the normal LGC channel. Uh, so everyone knows all participants, but the moderators and the presenter have their video shut off and are muted. If there are questions, please put them in the Discord Q&A channel or inside the Zoom chat. We have several people watching for questions at the various locations, but the easiest way to get your question answered is to become a member and sign into Zoom so you can ask your question live in chat. Becoming a member is inexpensive, it's only about 10 bucks a year, and brings other benefits with it. After our social distance learning session, we have pub chat over in Discord. For those who'd like to join us, I put the link in the Zoom chat. And now, take it away, Anna, feel free to start. Hi everyone, I'm Anna Kaufman. I'm with the San Francisco chapter of the Surfrider Foundation. And um, we started a shotgun wad watcher global. It's a global initiative now. We started it back probably in about 2019 after we noticed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plastic shotgun wads uh, showing up on the San Francisco beaches. So you'll see here, this is the, the home screen of the initiative and it's a world map. And each of the little bullseye, the red bullseye area is, is one post. And when you see numbers like in the San Francisco Bay area there, you see 212. Um, that's how many different posts there are in that one particular area. And so the problem that we found with the, the shotgun was, was um, through social media, through Instagram, there's a, a tremendous amount of beach cleaners all over the world that are posting the uh, photos of the plastic pollution that they find, whether it be bottle caps or plastic straws. And in this case, uh, turned out it was going to be shotgun wads and they're found in so many different areas across the globe and for a while it was just the northern hemisphere and then we noticed that in Australia and New Zealand and then since this screen grab was taken uh, some have also shown up in South Africa that have been posted by a beach cleaner there. Uh, let's see how do I go there. Um, so for those of you not familiar with Surfrider Foundation, our, our mission, we're a nonprofit organization. It's over all across the United States and there's some all, uh, international chapters as well. And our mission is to protect our oceans, waves and beaches for all to enjoy. And um, probably one of the things that we're most uh, known for is our beach cleanups. And that brings us back to cigarette butt pollution and, and plastic straws. I think the San Francisco chapter was um, pretty popular in banning plastic straws in, in San Francisco and then beyond uh, throughout the state and hopefully nationwide. Um, Coastal Preservation, Hold On To Your Butts is a campaign for cigarette litter, uh, which is also the filters are plastic. They're made of plastic. And so uh, when people are littering those, they end up in our waterways as well. Rise Above Plastic is a, uh, you know, same initiative that we're trying to keep people to use reusables, um, bring your own fork to a restaurant or, or your own takeout container, things like that. Ocean Friendly Restaurants is a program that um, is in a lot of different uh, chapters of the Surfrider Foundation where the restaurants are using reusables. They don't hand out plastic uh, unnecessarily. Then the Shotgun Wad Watcher got added uh, a few years ago and No Solo is an initiative that was started by uh, the University of Berkeley to get the red solo cups out of the um, out of the you know parties scene basically. So people brought their own cups. And here's a photo that was taken just last August after uh, we went out. I went with a friend of mine to the Point Pinole Regional Park, which is just north of the Richmond Rod and Gun Club. And in two hours, two people, we picked up um, 
I think it was like four, 400, 500 something shotgun wads and a few casings just in a short period of time. So after uh, we went out on August 30th of last year, we went out a week later and picked up an equal amount. So I think it, between those two cleanups, we had about I don't know, 1,100 shotgun wads. And I reached out to the gun club to see if I could come speak to them about um, their part in, in shooting over water and also to see if the gun club could work with us um, to create more of a demand through the ammunition manufacturers uh, to produce marine responsible shotgun wad material. And um, as time goes on here, the ammunition manufacturers are coming up with more marine safe materials than, than plastic that just floats throughout our bay and can be mistaken for squid by birds or, or fish um, as, as traditional plastic just floats around our waterways. Uh, these are the types of shotgun wads that we picked up at Point Penal. So um, the one in the middle there, as I understand, is coming from the Skeet Club. That's the type of plastic wad that's coming from uh, Richmond Rod and Gun. And then the other two, I believe, are hunting wads. I don't know exactly what type of wads all of these things are, but um, the location at Point Penal Regional Park, um, the Delta... Uh, the Delta flushes out in that area. There's an eddy there washing around um, from the Napa area and the Sacramento rivers dumping out at that area. And then the tides and the winds, everything's just coming and going. And the wind is constantly blowing back to the shoreline there. So the wads are getting caught up in the reeds and then they end up on the beaches. So um, th that's why we're finding so many in that one area. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the anatomy of a shotgun shell, the colorful, in this case, purple area is the casing. There's usually, usually a brass end on it. The plastic wadding will hold the shot or the, the you know, metal pellets. Um, and in former times, the, the wadding was made up of uh, fiber or a cardboard cup and that held the shot together. And then as the, the map here, the trajectory, the, the casing stays with the shooter, the wads go maybe 20, 25, 30 yards away from the shooter drop. And then the, um, the target is further away and then the shot continues on. Um, in this case, we're not talking about lead shot, we're just talking about plastic shotgun wads that are landing either in the marsh area or on land and when they might stay there. Or in a lot of cases with the duck hunting or skeet shooting, they're going into the waterways. And then with the, um, as the snow melts and the rains begin and the tides are changing twice a day, every day um, in the San Francisco Bay, they're getting washed out and, and ultimately ending up on the San Francisco beaches, which is how I got involved with this. Um, this is a screen grab from December 2019 when I gave a pre presentation um, to, to the Contra Costa Watershed Symposium. I hadn't gone too far inland at that point. I had just, you know, basically documented truck and wads were at the beaches that I had been to in San Francisco. Um, and then in Marin County, not at Point Reyes, um, I stopped at Martinez one day after a family gathering out in, in Oakley and picked up, uh, I think, 25 shotgun wads at the marina there. So they're coming and going as well. And then this is a screen grab um, uh, almost two years later. And so the initiative had gained traction um, more people were aware of it. There was a gentleman down in Mountain View or, or that area down by the um, hunting reserve there. I think he picked up four or 500 shotgun wads and he posted to, to that region. And then up at, at Rio Vista where there's windsurfing and, and um, you know, the Sacramento River and duck hunting and everything, the, the shotgun wads are, are starting further and further upstream. And you know they just flush out over time uh, if they if they do reach the water there. 
And then this is the, just this summer, um, we started doing more, more concentrated uh, cleanups at the Point Pinole Regional Park. We were just astonished by the amount of number of shotgun wads that two people could pick up in two hours. And since that time, um, after, after meeting with the Richmond Rod and Gun Club and the, the greater membership there, uh, they started to do or uh, host a couple of their own cleanup so um, they've contributed to the cleanup effort which is really appreciated because the more that are picked up um, upstream the fewer that we're finding in San Francisco which um, you know ultimately the goal would be to have more marine safe wadding materials so that they're not floating around at all the um, there was a study that was put on by Kate Bembrose. Uh, she had a grant from um, the, she works with the Bolinas Lagoon Restoration. She was a project manager and she worked with NOAA to study and and go into the hunting reserves and raise awareness with the shooters. Uh, there were a lot of shooters that weren't familiar with uh, the fact that the shotgun wads were going um, into the marsh areas and, and floating around the bay and ending up on beaches uh, far and wide. So she did a study with them and uh, there were a lot of surveys taken. She created these these um, these little containers here for when the, the hunters were coming out of the marsh to put their wads in. It was a data collection and also she was focusing on wad retrieval. And you can see from the, the plexiglass containers here, there aren't as many wads in there as, as there are sh uh, shotgun casings, but at least it's a beginning of, it's a conversation, it's, it's an awareness campaign. And ultimately the end goal would to would be to have enough people familiar with the situation to to request from their distributors and their ammunition manufacturers to create more uh, marine responsible materials that are so that we don't have so much plastic in our waterways. Um, this uh, it was a screen grab from earlier, uh, just probably during the pandemic, earlier in the pandemic, where um, we had documented 85, over 85,000 shotgun wads. The number's grown. I don't have a, um, an accurate number to date. The, the host of the initiative, they had some growing pains during the pandemic as well. So I don't have the exact data, um, but we're trying to get those numbers back so that we can um, you know, communicate a, a, a more accurate number. But I, my guess is we're probably at about 100,000 shotgun wads uh, that have been uh, documented from this initiative. And here's one that was found and photographed by a beach cleaner above the Arctic Circle. Um, so this island, and I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I don't really know how to pronounce that one, but it's um, it's a territory of Norway. So that was uh, picked up uh, last July. Um, so that's the the furthest north uh, shotgun wad that's been documented by this initiative. And then in the Southern hemisphere, as I mentioned earlier, um, they've been found and collected in Australia and New Zealand and now uh, South Africa. Um, the, this is sort of the good news in all this is that the industry is changing. Marine biologists are getting more involved. Um, the Green Ops ammo ammunition was created by uh, uh, a hunter and marine biologist. So they're familiar with the, the need for the performance to uh, you know, remain the same and, or hopefully better. I don't know if they can get better than what's currently out there, but, but the desire is to have the shots stay together and, and hit the target. Um, so no one wants a lesser performing wad, but we would like a marine safe wad. And I know that that's possible. Green Ops Ammo was acquired by one of the largest uh, ammunition, one of the three largest ammunition manufacturers in the United States. I don't know which one. They haven't gone public with the information yet, but hopefully in the near future, we'll learn that. And green, the Green Ops Ammo technology, which was a more 
environmentally responsible wad and it was made from marine degradable polymers which is still a it's a bioplastic but it was designed to break up as it exited the chamber and then instead of floating it was uh, designed to sink and then it would degrade at the at, in in the sea floor or or in a marsh or you know on land it would de- it would uh, degrade a lot c- more quickly than plastic because Basically, plastic just breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces as it photodegrades. The sun just eats it up, but it doesn't ever disappear. It just becomes smaller and smaller bits of microplastic, and and that's really harmful to, you know, our drinking water, our wildlife, um, and just the environment in general. It's unsightly to be stepping over shotgun wads. I think on you know, at a lake or a beach or wherever you're going to find them. Um, The shotgun casing here that you see on the left is a sample. Um, The same marine biologist uh, went out after Green Ops Ammo was acquired and they're using uh, 100% natural products like finely ground walnut shell media as the wadding uh, material just as uh, in former times I mentioned they uh, felt was used and is still used in the United Kingdom and they're also using the corn cob uh, just discarded you know corn cob after you have your corn on the cob or whatever um, they're using corn cob media to uh, for shotgun wads as as well so what will be going into the waterways or the idea anyway is that it would be 100 percent natural and it would just go back to the environment and basically it's a leave no trace situation and let's see i have another slide here somewhere see if i can get to it Uh, these are my collection points. I've, I'm sure I've picked them up for you know further and wider since I put together this document. But I've collected shotgun wads in Hawaii, all over this every San Francisco beach that I've been to. Um, I was in Wales a couple of years ago, so I, I picked up a, quite a quite a few in Wales and up in Humboldt, San Rafael, all over the Bay Area. Basically, there, there's no there's no real beach you can get to that doesn't have a shotgun wad um, or the potential to have a shotgun wad float up on it in the San Francisco Bay Area, unfortunately. Um, and in an effort to continue to raise awareness, uh, I've noticed that uh, through arts and education and, and, and color and light and um, a number of years ago, the Surfrider Foundation, we had an event, an arts and education event called Message in a Bottle. So I, this center picture here is a shotgun wad chandelier I put together with discarded Christmas lights and shotgun wads and old um, uh discarded wreath frames, you know, the wreaths that you have and you hang on your front door and over over the holidays. Um, I picked up a few of those off the streets of San Francisco and just created this um, illuminated piece that we had on display at the Palace of Fine Arts. And it got a lot of attention, which is um, the idea just to get people talking about shotgun wads. And then during the pandemic, we had uh, the Berkeley Ecology Center had a fashion event um, where there were a number of us that created uh, pieces that you could wear from discarded uh, materials. And the skirt that I'm wearing there uh, was made out of an old window screen and um, fairy lights that I that I found and uh, shotgun lots. And if you have any questions in the future my my email address is is pretty straightforward it's wads at sf.surfrider.org and you can find uh, our other initiatives online at sf.surfrider.org and this was a photo that was published in the san francisco examiner after picking up i think it was like 65 shotgun wads or something right below the cliff house on ocean beach and that's that's pretty much it that i have for now kyle if you want to take over yep uh, we have at least one question so if anyone else has any please throw them in chat uh, either here or in discord uh, what resources are there uh, for shooters for those of us that want to become involved 
Uh, are there, do you have any suggestions, whether that's organizations or reaching out to certain ammo manufacturers or where would you go from there? Well, that's, that's a tricky part. I think, I think the, um, the best, the best approach for it right now would be to work with the distributors or request uh, the distributors that are supplying the ammunition to the sporting goods stores and, and the skeet clubs or the, or the gun clubs that, that sell ammunition to basically create the demand with, within the shooting industry. Um, when I spoke with Kent, uh, Kent ammunition, I don't know, it must have been in 2019, they they told me that they didn't believe that the demand existed so that they weren't really upping the supply. And, and Kent has a product that they import from the UK. It's called Kent Gamebor or Gambor. And it's a paper, paper shot cup. So that that too would break down um, entirely in the in the open environment. Um, but when I was speaking with them, they didn't feel like enough hunters um, were aware of this of the problem, so that they weren't really up in their game. And I don't know a tremendous amount about how the ammunition manufacturers, you know, navigate the national market, but. I think if there's enough chatter about having a marine safe and em environmentally friendly wad like the Green Ops ammo technology or the walnut shell corn cob technology, uh, that that would be the best is, is to, you know, I don't know, we can start a letter writing campaign or a, a change.org or something so that, so that the ammunition manufacturers are aware that the, um, that the demand is growing at the, that hunters would like to have a more Marine safe material. Gotcha. Education seems to be a big thing for fellow hunters. Most hunters are conservationists. They want to go hunting again. They want to keep the lands uh, or, or waters in this case, um, in good condition so they can keep hunting their kids can and so on and so forth. So you let people know, and then everyone pushes out, uh, for the ammunition manufacturers seems like a good starting point. Absolutely. Uh, this one's a little bit long. So I'm going to read the whole thing here. Uh, how have the biodegradable wads that the Richmond rod and gun club uh, use in its club ammo fared and to clarify has there been any sort of documentation tracking those special wads that they use wait can you repeat that did you did you say that there was a a um can you just repeat that yeah sure um how have the biodegradable wads that uh the richmond rod and gun club uses use in its club ammo fared has there been any sort of documentation tracking those special wads that they use Oh, I, I actually wasn't aware that they had a, a marine responsible wadding material that, that they were using. The, the wads that I understand that they're shooting, like the one that I showed earlier that was sort of a brownish, you know, muddyish tone. Um, I was told from a couple of members at the club when I spoke at the club that those that the club understood those to be photodegradable. And what I tried to explain is that, you know, photo degradation basically just breaks the plastic down into smaller and smaller pieces, but it's still just plastic and it becomes microplastic at that point and never goes away. So if they had a more marine safe wadding material um, or biodegradable material, I, I was unaware of that. Okay, we have several members uh, that are also members of the that club, so I'm sure we'll have one or two people reaching out to find out about that. Okay. Uh, have you heard about the backcountry hunters and anglers? I know. Well, wait, maybe. Are they in the Tahoe area, or are they nationwide? Um, I am not sure. That question uh, came from someone here. Uh, John, do you national organization um, oh, okay. it sounds like they uh, would be a great organization to reach out to and make common cause with from the comments in the zoom chat 
Yeah, no, that would be great. If, if anybody has any contact information, I would be happy to, to reach out with them. I it also, somebody asked in an earlier um, meeting that we had, if, if I'd ever reached out to Dick sporting goods, because I think that would be also a great thing. And, and it's, nearly impossible to find contact information for these, for these companies on online. And um, I haven't gone into a store to try it in that direction. So if anybody has contact information for sure, I would love to be in touch with, with anybody that will listen to, to, uh, to us about plastic pollution and shotgun mods. Gotcha. Uh, John mentioned that they're based out of Montana. Okay. Um, but he doesn't have a direct contact over there. It's just uh, an easily Googleable uh, organization. Absolutely, that you might be able to I'll check it out. out to. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have any other questions. Let me double check my notes here. No, that looks like it's it for the moment. I'll keep the chat open for a few more seconds just to see if anyone else has a question or two. And we'll go from there. But if not, well, we'll close the SDL down and go over to PubChat. Perfect. And well, how long? Actually, no. There, there is um, one more question. How long has Surfrider been around for the foundation itself? Oh, since 1984. Wow. So there's, there's a lot of lot of not everybody's a surfer, but there's a lot of surfers that you know are are trying to protect the access to the beach and. And just to keep, we do uh, uh, water testing to make sure that the beaches are safe to go into the water when after big storms and there's a lot of runoff. Um, so there's all sorts of different initiatives that are, are you know, just depending on what region you're in, um, that that certain people are, are, we're mostly volunteer run. So it just depends on what things are coming up in, in the area that people live in. Uh, that become popular. Gotcha. Uh, now there's one other organization um, that was mentioned, Ducks Unlimited. I know that they have supported uh, biodegradable wads and non-toxic pellets and loads and uh, ammo for some time now. Is that something that you have reached out to them about or anyone in the orga organization has worked with them on any of this? So uh, Kate Bimrose with with Noah, she worked with Ducks Unlimited on on her um, study with the with the Eden Landing Hunting Reserve and Don Edwards. And so um, I, I don't know exactly what came out of that, but I haven't spoken with Ducks Unlimited. Um, but I'm definitely going to reach out to the backcountry um, and and also Ducks Unlimited. I can probably get that contact information from Kate. <laughs> 